Chapter 4, Hurry Up and Matter, of uh, David Dark's Life's Too Short to Pretend You're Not Religious. Um, so, <clears throat> the first, uh, first thing I'd say about this chapter is it's, uh, it's about attention. Um, I'm starting to think the whole book is about attention, paying attention. Um, in a very busy world, and the irony that I'm recording this on my phone that distracts me all the time is not lost to me. Um, the very act of reading this book for me has been a process of paying attention. Um, and I'm an easily distracted person as it is. Um, and my phone and my computer and my gaming system all constantly call to me and buzz at me and send me notifications of things that I should or could or need to be doing constantly bombarded by advertisements and um, things vying for my attention um, uh, there's a lot of good there's a lot of good quotes in here I want to throw one out that um, David Dark uses in his classroom it sounds like every semester um, he talks about the students phones and he defines them as electric soul molesters um, which feels so harsh um, and then it goes on and it just sort of describes why a student asks, why are you calling it that? And he, and he says, it has a way of robbing you of your presence and robbing us of yours. Um, and it's like, how can you really be there with someone, really hear them if every moment you're looking down at your phone, you're pulled away, to another thing that has taken your attention. I mean, I, I may have missed the point of the chapter, but I don't think I have. I, I think hurry up and matter, one, is sarcasm. <laughs> uh, you know, you got to keep doing more stuff to do more stuff, to get more things. Go, go, go. The rats, the gerbil on the, on the wheel, um, constantly running and never getting anywhere. And then how do we uh, pause? I think it comes down to actually stopping. <laughs> For me, I have to come sit outside, open a book. I, even out here, I was bringing my computer and other things. Um, my phone was always here. It's still very difficult for me to concentrate long enough to like even read through the chapter. Um, but it's so good. Um, here's, a, here's another good one. We are lar uh, largely estranged from our own intuition. It's as if our attention is stretched so thin and in so many different directions that we find ourselves deprived of the time and space in which to feel deeply and form our own thoughts can't even form our own thoughts because we're so constantly being told what to think. And I think there are good thoughts to think. <laughs> there, again, the irony is not lost on me that I'm posting a book review that is giving us a way to think. Um, but I think this is a right, it resonates with me as a, as a right thing that desire to s disconnect. And, and this whole uh, COVID-19 virus, which I know some people don't even think is a thing and, and other people are taking very seriously, um, it has given me a chance to slow down a lot. And I'm still crazy busy. I'm still working. I'm still uh, doing things every day. But it's given me a little more time in the mornings like this to like pause and hear 
my own thoughts uninterrupted for a few minutes, which is, it's weird because I don't do it all the time. And I've, I've tried to make a practice over the last few years. Um, you know, I, 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 I take out my Bible almost every day. I don't read it every day, um, but I take it out. I have a journal, a journal almost every day, not every day, but, um, and it's that desire to at least at some point in my day pay attention to my own thoughts and then uh, I'm trying to be more present with other people as well and that's very difficult and I'm not super great at it and I I mean I can just think back to like the last week where I visited family and had friends uh, talking to friends and like how how I'm on like multiple possibly multiple devices <laughs> of like a gaming system here and my phone here and they're both talking at me and I'm sort of listening uh, so I am sorry um, to you my friends who I haven't given the uh, gift of my attention I think you you know this to be true. I think you probably value value friends that listen to you, that hear you. And not only do they hear you, but they're, they have sustained attention um, for what you're saying or going through or whatever. Um, and I think, I think that's another part of this chapter. Um, One of the, the, this is it, I like this phrase, it's, um, I guess the poet William Stafford refers to as courtesy of the heart, which I guess he got from Nietzsche. Um, and it talks about or elaborates on the necessity of attentiveness. Um, and that's, I, that's what I'm going to leave you guys with. This chapter is about, you know paying attention, slowing down, turning off, um, and being there. Uh, maybe that's what that Wilco album was about. Being there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know all the songs very well. So, have a good day. Take a moment, pause, maybe reflect on um, what has your attention.